What's up, Hills fans? Back again real soon, huh? Um, didn't have to wait long. Uh, I thought possibly this weekend, early next week, but today, well, last night really, news started, you know, leaking out that the Bills had uh, honed in on their man to be their next head coach following the um, Rex Ryan firing and the Anthony Lynn appointment to its interim head coach. And the new man is former, now former, Carolina Panthers defensive coordinator and the new Buffalo Bills head coach, Sean McDermott. Um, a complete 360 um, from everything we've heard and learned in the past, I'm sure, 24 hours. Us Bills fans probably reading up as much as we could because we're all a bunch of junkies and when these types of things happen of course they seem to happen a lot more frequently than for most other teams unfortunately um as per you know just head coaching um changes um seems like uh, not obviously the kind of guy who's going to get up there and be the raw raw the especially in front of the media and, and i would uh, caution bills fans not to judge him how he addresses the media because what's important is how he addresses the football team and how he how they view him. Do they respect him? Do they heed his word? Do they you know f take direction, follow direction? And if not, from everything I've learned, he's been given the autonomy to see those kind of types out as per the roster. Um, and that's something else I'll touch on because I did. I, I, I mistakenly omitted it from my last video because I was I was just even though I had taken notes I had left a couple of key points out which which I later looked back and it frustrated me and there was no way I was going to delete the video so I um, obviously with the McDermott news and um, just important well I find them important um, maybe you will too <laughs> tidbits that um, we'll touch on. You know, people are going to want to speculate a lot about 53-man control, personnel decisions. We, we've learned that he's going to have a uh, purview over the support staff, whether it's video people, strength and conditioning, which I feel like he should anyway, uh, medical staff, training staff. That's now under his watch. wasn't under Ryan. Um, and Ryan obviously wasn't the type of guy. He just he seemed just like... The kind of like you work it out. You, we all know the lack of it. Totally falls back to the one eight, you know, the three sixty spin away from the Ryan kind of loose, loosey goosey ship that we um, we all saw uh, unfold in front of our very eyes, especially on the field. So we can only imagine what it was like uh, behind the scenes. Um, so he's gonna now have all that under his umbrella. And I would expect to see changes there. You know, I alluded to you know miscommunications between those those particular departments and the head coach, um, and those things need to be ironed out. There needs to be no gray area there. You know, and that's to also not only alleviate but just quell any of these blunders they have in press conferences. You know, going back, we can go back to Marone guaranteeing. EJ would play in the last game of 13, and he didn't, and he caught a lot of flack for that. He became very bitter and, um, you know, just an awkward kind of guy. And that's the thing is I don't – what I want from McDermott, because I don't care how he is or isn't in front of the press. I think we, we all – like Tyrod with a lot of, I was never a big Tyrod guy, but with a lot of, I understand the allure. I understood the, of liking the idea of a guy like him, the underdog, the us, it, it, it kind of fits into the Bills um, mentality of the us against the world. We're never going to win, you know, small man complex, you know, um, play in New York, but we're still like a second and third citizen to the Jets and the Giants um, the mighty Patriots to the East, it, it's just, you know, it, it's like worse than stepbrother treatment, you know, stepchild treatment. It's just, you know, so I understand the, um, 
you know, the stigma and the, you know, just the way we feel as Bills fans. I don't need him to be this way in front of the media, you know, liking the idea of Ryan. It's essentially us liking the idea of what we envision we'd want in a football coach. We'd want in our head coach, you know, you know, just brash and, 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 and just, yeah, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. We don't care who knows it. We, we're just like, oh, that's, that's cool. That's different. But, you know, got to go do it. Got to go do it. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, uh, it wasn't done. You know, kind of just also writing the, uh, the final uh, epitaph on the uh, Ryan tenure. It, um, from what I sort of see, I mean, for those of you follow me on Twitter, you know, Vicious155, um, the change made and it was done in a way that it was done, it was going to be done at the end of the year. Obviously, Ryan did put, put Terry on the spot. Um, obviously, with designs of wanting to go see his son play Clemson, and I, who could not, you know, who could hold that against him? He's like, you're gonna let me go. You're gonna let me go. He didn't want to be dead man walking and in, going into, you know, MetLife Stadium to coach his last, probably his last game as head coach against the Jets. That would have been weird. So, and it was clear that he wasn't gonna bench Tyrod. So, it was just best to part ways there. And then that creates the, the firestorm that was where Whaley, you know, unfortunately embarrassed himself and the organization on multiple levels. Um, a herd that was not looked upon very favorably by the Pagulas, his performance. Um, and this is what I was going to touch on in my last video, but I didn't. Ryan himself. Now, if you look at Ryan's contract, five-year deal, five, five and some change per year, which is which is a lot, especially for a guy who had just been fired, um, has the name, the cachet. You know, for the first time head coaches, he checked a lot of boxes. You know, he's the guy who's going to get out there and do all all the stuff I alluded to in my last video. You know, he said. one of the press conferences during pit lead up to Pittsburgh, he fielded a question about Ross Cockrell. And he said, there's one I regret cutting. That's a guy, something I'm paraphrasing. That's a guy I regret cutting. Meaning he's directly saying he was responsible for cutting him. Right? Cockrell was part of the 15 cuts to get to 53. So Rex right there is telling you he had control of the 53. Because Rex Ryan wasn't just going to walk into one Bill's drive, you know, with his name and the price tag being held and the fact that his agent, um, Jimmy Sexton, had just, it is the representative of the, of the guy who just walked out of Buffalo with $4 million of the Pagula's money. Doug Marone, he's going to go in there with some, you know, some assurances. So, in order to save face publicly, in order to see, you know, not be, you know, emasculated per se, it was put out there that Whaley had the 53. In my opinion, he never had the 53. And I'll tell you again, I don't think he does now. I don't think he has the 53. I think he's more or less the guy who's going to go out and find. And he's done this. I can't, and this is, I'm going to be even handed here. He has done this. He has shown that he has done this. He did it for Marone. He went out and got Orton. He didn't want to willingly go get Orton, but he did. Right? And remember this Tim Graham story. Remember the Tim Graham story. Whaley gone rogue. Remember that? That Whaley went rogue. Because he cut a 35-year-old running back? 
and who nobody missed during the season. I think maybe for one or two games when they had to roll out, and it's not like Fred went up, went out and lit up, lit up the league when he left the Bills. You know that one game where they had Boom Heron and uh, Booby Dixon out there in Tennessee. But how how did he go rogue there? What happened was he went around, he went through the back door, cut him. Staff didn't like that because Ryan, of course, you know, you know, being the braggadocio, braggadocious is hopefully that's a word. <laughs> guy that he is told the staff I have the 53 so there was a few instances castle being another castle definitely being another because Roman was firmly in the castle camp to be starting starting quarterback and that's where a lot of these and, th and this is a thing I have to I have to really stress is these people need to be on the same page otherwise this shit will not turn around and that's why I hope you know, whatever assurances or provisions or understandings the Pagulas are getting, because make no mistake, this is a Pagula hire. Whaley's in the room. I, I do think Whaley wanted Lynn to be the head coach. And I think, you know, from whatever familiarity for this guy to come in and say, hey, look, here I am. This is what I'm about. This is what I'm bringing to the table. This is what I see that needs rectifying. And this is what needs to be hashed out in order for this to work. Because not for nothing, I've been to the playoffs. Was it two, three of the last five years? I've been, you know, to the I've been to the big show. Your last guy was talking about it, but never made it. Even though I'm not the head coach, I I oversaw a very successful unit, you know. And he had to defend elite quarterbacks year in and year out, twice a year. Drew Brees, you know, Matt Ryan twice, Jameis Winston now now up and coming twice. You know, practice against Cam Newton, so that holds weight. You know, guy, you know, looking at his resume, former safety, definitely a position Bills need coaching up at, and definitely an infusion of talent. So, you know, all this stuff about him being a, you know, two-time All-American wrestler and the work ethic and the grinding that goes with that and all that sort of pizzazz, that's, that's cool. But, you know, having him be on top of all the minute details, having him be totally buttoned down, wired into everything that's going on, and not a Marone wired in where he's, you know, pulling Tim Graham into some, you know, break room in the back of Niagara Airport to, you know, question him about a tweet with Birch told. How embarrassing is that? And that's, you know, this is what I'm talking about. This, that type, this is another thing I touched on in my last video. The Bills have to stop with this small fry shit. Okay, and that's that's prior to ownership, but I want him to be a detailed guy when it comes to football, when it comes to the logistics and the inner workings and all the, you know, ins and outs of the football team, not what this person's tweeting or this is doing, or then, then you have a totally, you know, 360 with Rex where he's... You know, he's going to the World Series game with, with the fucking staff. He's, you know, doing commercials. He's, he's got his, 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 his hands in, his, in all these other pies. Meanwhile, the football team's hemorrhaging, was hemorrhaging. Especially in his, under his so-called area of expertise. So, major black eye there. And that... There was no way you could bring that back. And for them to turn to this type of coach now, you know, a guy who's, you know, a decade younger, a guy who's, you know, was under Andy Reid, 
a, a proven, you know, say what you want about Andy Reid, he's a proven winner. And I, I'll stress this, I don't need this guy to win the press conference on Friday. I need him to win that locker room and win on Sundays. I need him to win that football team. I need him to win that organization. And all these losers that matriculate around one Bills drive, they need to be slowly show the door. If Whaley's been compromised somehow and he finds it, you know what, get him out of there too. Because you know what, his draft record doesn't speak too well for himself. He seemed like he's, he's okay to play nice for a little bit. But if he starts his shit, show him out. Okay, because you can't be around this long and have this little to show and want to show back up at another PC bumbling all over yourself like he did. None of that. You know, if you want to have, you know, stick Brandon in the back room and have him do, you know, sponsorship, you know, contracts and all this other, you know, Stuff that is obviously necessary when it comes to a football team's finances and workings, that's fine. But as per contracts with players, as per negotiations with agents, no thank you. I want him to have no part. I, I, I want him to have no part of anything to do with the football operations. Jim Overdorf, off been there too long. Pagula needs to get his own man in there to do these deals to make sure they get done properly and you can walk into the room with the respect that's needed that both parties feel, you know, satisfied as opposed to it always seems like the bills are getting the short the short stick on some of these exchanges when it comes to whether it's a, you know, a draft trade or, you know, a, a free agent negotiation where we have to fucking basically have the guy held hostage for a week before we get him to sign on the dotted line. You know. The have, have, have put their money where their mouth is. They've done that. They've walked in there and said, you know what? Ryan's not good enough. We signed him to a five-year deal. Fuck it. We'll pay that money. We'll pay that money. Off with you. Sean McDermott, you know what? We're not we're not going to stick with with what we what we're comfortable with. We're going to stick with what has some substance behind it and something that because fresh eyes were needed. You couldn't you can't have any carryover. You know, there's some talk now. Oh, maybe Lynn stays as OC. No, you can't have that. This needs to be a football team that's directed strictly by McDermott. There can be no carryover, no leftover voices that the players can possibly you know dip off to. None of that. No currying of favor, none of that. So, and, and all that shit matters. Because when you got all that politicking going on, and we and, and, and shit's been rogue there too long for it not to have been. Okay? So, all that shit needs to be ironed out or on its way to being ironed out. You know, and like I was just just speaking about, Pagula's put his money where his mouth is, especially as per, you know, he's willing to put the money in back into the building. You see that lavish new draft uh, room that they have. You know, the Bills.com did a piece on it. The thing looks like fucking some war room out of the White House. All the other amenities, all the other you know, things that they've put in there. They've, they've spent the money. You know, whether you're targeting McDaniels, like I was just saying, he was their guy. You know what? Listen, we'll, we'll pay that money. You know, we'll, we'll give you what you want because we got it and we'll spend it because we want to win. And that's what you got to do if you want to win. If you want to dig out of this rut, this cavernous hole that this team has you know, put itself in it. And, and let's be honest, a lot of it is their own doing. A lot of it is of their own making. And there needs to be change, obviously. And we all know in a realistic world, the real world, 
that that change isn't going to come about, you know, in one wake up. It's going to happen in drips and drabs. So slowly get those losers out of there because they don't. None of them know how to win. None of none of them really ever been around winning. And give this guy the support he needs and the types of players he needs, and that way us fans can judge him properly. So, you know, again, I don't sound like I'm <laughs> introing a new Bills head coach. I'm kind of all over the place, but, you know, I'm glad they didn't stick with the same old. I'm glad they went with fresh face, fresh ideas, fresh minds, because it, it's, it's clearly needed here. Clearly needed. I didn't need to see a guy who has been tarnished by the stench of what's going on there. And, you know, people can say what they want about Lynn. He's the anti-Ryan. He's the anti-this. That's fine. But he's been under that guy's umbrella for a long time and has had chances to leave and hasn't. And nobody's offered him a head coaching job yet. So, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know what type of coach he is. I know LaShawn McCoy is talented. I don't know how much or how little his coaching has helped you know, add to that, but you know, it's it's a talent driven business. But coaching does matter. And being on top of things, I mean God, what what how simple of whoa, can you have eleven men on the field? Do you do you do you know like how to, to manage the time if you got this art would you punt here? You know, three minutes to go in your coaching life, you're gonna punt? I mean, I know I'm being an ass, but still, you know. We can, you know, honestly say um, they didn't um, kowtow to anybody. If again, if I said it, if, if if Whaley's been compromised here, he needs to go. Um, he's there in the picture with them. So again, looks like he's willing to play nice. And I wouldn't. I could probably pretty much tell you McDermott's gonna have the Pagulas here. He's gonna have their backing and Whaley apparently does to a degree still but he needs to get better players in here he needs to stop drafting these injured guys and start drafting guys that 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 love football and want to play football not to say Raglan and, and, and Lawson don't because you know but drafting Lawson was a little irresponsible knowing that his shoulder was in the condition it was Raglan was a freak injury but drafting a Col drafting a Listonby, who's coming off double hernia surgery and didn't give you anything all year, who knows what that fifth round pick could be, or whatever his sixth round pick? Who knows? You know, revision is, history is is twenty twenty, but who, you know, they can't. They got to stop overvaluing and overinflating their own the, the talent and be realistic about the talent on the roster. No. Or, oh, I drafted this guy. He's going to... No, 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 no. He's not good. He's not good. You don't need a roster spot. But you don't need to be drafting injured players, especially at a position where you were in sore need. Wide receiver. That, to me, is a, is, is a black guy. I, I, you know, and I know it's a sick-round pick, but still, that, that can't happen. No. These, you know... And I understand you can have a, a team full of choir boys, but when you got a player, you know, talented as 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 Carlos Williams is, with the red flags he has, and we've seen how that story went and has gone, you can't be wasting fifth round picks on that. You can't. This team's the the way you allocate those picks are is vital, and they all matter. It's the best. It's the best currency. You got it's the lifeblood of your football team. You can't just be, you know, tossing them around like free samples. You know, some of these trades he's made for for wide receivers that you know veteran wide receivers like you know Mike Williams. He traded a pick for you know he traded a a, a late round pick and recouped one for for Castle. You know he traded away a pick. In this in this past draft to trade up and get Raglan, I, I you don't need to do that. 
I, 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 I don't like that. This team needs to value every one of those picks. Now, if you want to add picks, especially the state that this roster's in, more more cracks added the better. That's the way I feel because you know what? It's 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 roulette anyway. They'll never tell you they're guessing. They're guessing just as much as us. So I know I'm all over the board here. You know, a lot of stuff has happened. It's as fluid a situation as could be. You know, um, as per I didn't even touch on the staff yet, and we'll learn a lot about. Uh, You know, Coach McDermott's plan as he administers his staff moving forward. Um, we've already gotten you know drips and drabs of what might be or could be the uh, offensive coordinator. You know, Mike McCoy is is a, is a is a hot name right now. Um, we'll see. You know, again, very fluid. We we just don't. Uh, you know. Again, I'm sure, you know, for a guy who was just a head coach like Mike McCoy, he's not going to come cheap. You know, but again, it just goes back to what I was saying about the Pagulas with, in regards to putting their money here. Whereas, you know, it was like with Ralph, you know, it's penny pinching all over the place when it came to, like, you know, the administrative side of it as per coaching staff and, and all those things of like. You know, there these people are like, hey, you know, if you want to fire the highest paid offensive coordinator in the league, fire him, Greg Roman. So I I wouldn't see why paying what McCoy wants would be an issue here, which is is, is nice to talk about. You know, we don't get many uh, we don't get many uh, feel goods as Bills fans. So I got to take my little you know my little nuggets when I can, and that feels good to be able to say, you know what, they'll pay the money for it. So, all right. Again, apologies for the scatterbrain. Um, we'll um, get a press conference day after tomorrow. We'll hear and see, you know, what his plan is. Again, I don't expect him to go up there and win the press conference, nor do I think he gives it a shit to, which is, again, don't sweat it. How this man interacts with the football team, how he administers his staff, how he directs the building, how he commands it, how he sets the tone, where the expectations are, you know, the loosey goosey, you know, shit. He needs to be like, we don't deserve that. We haven't earned that. You know, but I'm sure, you know, there's a there's still you know, a balance there. And he seems like possibly, possibly, you know, I'm very guarded. Um, you know, hopefully he can, you know, take the temperature, gauge the temperature of that and, and be right about it. All right, Bills fans, you have a good one. Um, take care. Let me know what your thoughts and opinions are about um, new head coach, Sean McDermott, um, possible coaching hires as per, you know, coordinators and, and because that's important. We didn't see three new head coaches get hired in the last 24 hours for no reasons because your support staff and your staff is important. You need, you need a good staff. You need, you need good, good people around you to make it work. You need good teachers. You need good assistants. You need good people that are in your corner that are going to help you make it work. You know, and you don't need a, 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 a staff of 20, obviously, 25, 26, like Rex, Rex had. You look at the staff in New England, it's it's, it's Spartan. It's like 13 guys, 14 guys, very with small staffs in the league. Just have the right staff. That's what I'm interested in. I don't need a, co a, a, a coach for every three players. I need good coaches or players that want to take instruction and go on the field and implement it the best they can. So, all right, Bulls fans, sorry I've gone off on a tangent. I just feel, you know, damn, I just, I, I would like to just watch this, think about watching this football team play a game next weekend. That's it. You know, that's it. And you know what I mean, playoff game. <laughs> so, 
All right, guys. Have a good one. Take care. Let me know what your thoughts, opinions are about all this stuff. Uh, everything's really fluid right now, so you know it's all coming in hot and heavy. And I'm um, sure we'll all have a lot of our own opinions and our own ideas and thoughts, which are always great. That's important. We all can't be kissing cousins. You know, there's um, you know debate and differences of opinion, and just you know sometimes my eyes open by other people's opinion. Oh, I didn't think of that angle. You got you got to give that some consideration and. Maybe vice versa. All right, guys, have a good one and uh, take care.